Hey, how are you here? On the 2nd of March 2019, the first launch of NASA's commercial crew program took place with the SpaceX Crew Dragon launching uncrewed to the ISS. On the second day of its flight, the main thing it had to demonstrate was the ability to self-dock itself to one of the ISS's docking ports. So at this point, we all know what docking is. When a spacecraft comes along to a station or another craft, and the two manage to attach themselves together so that people can go in between. But how does it work exactly? Well, all spacecraft docking done today is done automatically, where the ship controls itself. Of course, if there's some problem with the automatic docking sequence, the astronauts on board can take control of it and manually control the ship. Otherwise, if there's no one on board, someone on the other ship can remotely control that ship. That's how we do it these days. At first, what the spacecraft need to do is to line up their docking ports so that they're in line with each other. And then they have to approach each other very slowly until they gently touch and then they can just leave the docking ports to do their thing. Say you have a spacecraft approaching the International Space Station. These days, the space station has GPS on board and it sends its GPS data to the other spacecraft, which then compares its own GPS data to that data to figure out where it is positioned relative to the station at any given time. Now, because they are in orbit, that means that these two craft are actually traveling in two slightly different circles. So at any given time, even if they start really still, they will eventually start to drift. And that future path of drifting could end up with them colliding, so they have to be really careful where their future path is going to be. The approaching craft fires its thrusters to slightly change the circle that it's moving in so that the drifting actually takes it closer toward the station in a safe manner. Then it uses a series of rangefinders and cameras to look for precisely placed reflectors on the other ship's docking port in order to line itself up. So let's talk about how some of these docking port mechanisms work then. The Drogon probe system was used on the Soviet Soyuz spacecraft for use with their space stations, namely the Salyut and Almaz stations, along with their Mir, and then the Russian segment of the International Space Station. The probe is a sticky outy thing on the active side, which has all the moving parts, while the Drogue is an inverted cone on the passive side, which just kind of sits there. It doesn't do anything actively. Once the probe reaches the innermost tip of the Drogue, it has latches that spring out and hold it in place in the drogue. And this is known as soft capture. The spacecraft then pulls its probe inward, also pulling itself toward the drogue and toward the other craft until the two docking rings of the two craft meet and then the hooks can be driven from the active side into the passive side, firmly securing the two together. And this is known as a hard dock. At this point, the two spacecraft are firmly attached, so they can start thinking of equalizing the pressure on both sides, then opening the hatches and letting people through. Having the visiting spacecraft be the active side is an important safety feature, because that allows it to still be able to undock and get away in case the station loses power and needs to be evacuated. Now for undocking, it's pretty simple. They close all the hatches and everything, make sure there's no leaks, and then they just let go of the hooks and the probe extends on a spring and the whole thing just gently kind of floats apart. The Apollo spacecraft used a very similar probe and drogue system for the moon missions and for the Skylab space station missions, though I hear it was a lot more janky to work with. Next up are androgynous systems. In this case, androgynous meaning both of the ports are the same and they can choose which one is going to be active and which one is going to be passive, although they have to make their mind up first, obviously. First up is the APATH system, which had several iterations. It was designed as a collaboration between US and Soviet engineers for the Apollo-Soyuz test project, which was a milestone of a mission where the Soyuz and an Apollo vehicle both docked mid-flight after being launched from different sides of the Earth. This docking port was then used on the Mir space station to connect up the US space shuttle. The side that decides to be the active side has a soft capture ring that it first extends, and that's attached with shock absorbers. That ring also has three metal guides, known as petals, that help it physically line up with the other ring as the two come together and the petals have these latches on the back of them that gently hold the two in place. When soft capture is achieved like this, then what the active port does is it starts to pull in its soft capture ring until the two docking port's rings can touch, and then the active side drives the hooks through to latch onto the passive side, and the two are now hard docked. Next up, we have the International Docking System Standard, which is the new standard for docking things in space. It's public domain for a change, which is really nice, so anyone can build a spacecraft to these specifications. NASA's version of this docking port design actually has electromagnets around the soft capture ring, 
helping reduce the impact of docking even further. The standard also includes provisions for transferring data, electrical power, and later even propellants. And that's really useful for helping visiting spacecraft to last longer on orbit by providing electrical power from the station's power system. And even in the future, being able to facilitate refueling missions to space stations by having fuel tankers come up and refuel through the docking port. So that's really cool. Now I need to make a quick note here for a really weird case that happened in the 70s. During the Apollo Soyuz test project I mentioned earlier, there was a major problem in that the two craft didn't just have different ways of doing things, they also had different atmospheres. The Soviet Soyuz used a normal air atmosphere made of nitrogen and oxygen at high pressure, whereas the Apollo command module used pure oxygen atmosphere at a very low pressure. Now if you were to go from the low pressure atmosphere to the high pressure atmosphere very quickly, you would get a sickness known as the bends, in which nitrogen bubbles in your blood expand and cause damage around your whole body. Not very good. The solution was to create an airlock-like module that would sit between the two modules and was actually launched in the same place they usually launch the lunar lander. This module allowed two of the three US astronauts to go inside of it, close the hatch, and then slowly acclimatize to the new atmosphere before opening the hatch to the Russian side. Now all of these docking systems have diameters of around 800 millimeters on the inside. That's about 80 centimeters. Not very much, is it? The reason for this is because thermal expansion of the metal that they're made of is a major issue. Often during a docking, one of the spacecraft is fully in sunlight for quite a while, while the other is fully in shadow on its docking port side. So you can imagine one has a much higher temperature on its docking port than the other. The docking port that's hotter is going to be a slightly bigger than it should be due to thermal expansion. So to minimize the significance of this error in size, they keep the docking ports nice and small so they can't expand quite as much. Now with docking, the ship comes along, approaches and docks under its own power. But with berthing, it's a little different. It needs a little bit of help. So let's talk about the common berthing mechanism. The common berthing mechanism is the main way that pieces of the International Space Station are attached to each other. It's much better for a more permanent attachment. Resupply vehicles like the Cygnus and the older SpaceX Cargo Dragon use the common berthing mechanism to attach to the ISS as basically kind of like a semi-permanent cargo pod. The problem is they needed the assistance of the ISS's robotic arm to grapple them as they flew by and then move them around to perfectly line them up with the port on the ISS. At that point, it needs to be slowly moved toward the station and then the petals guide them together. And then 16 bolts are mechanically driven from one side through to the other. And this is quite a much more involved process. Then of course, once they're attached and the pressures are all equalized, there are these four controller box things that have to be removed and then later reattached by the astronauts. It's a hassle. But there is an advantage. The docking port is larger than a meter in diameter, about 127 centimeters. This is possible because the active port drives in its bolts in several different stages over a much longer period of time. And the reason that this is acceptable is because no one's going to be using this port in a hurry, unlike with the other ports where there are evacuation and safety critical things in mind. Taking more time and driving the bolts in in several stages allows them to equalize the temperatures between the two docking ports. That, and uh, it's really pretty. Like, just, just look at how the latching mechanism looks on the inside. You may have seen these in the background of uh, Interstellar on the Endurance space station set. They just, oh, look at that. So I hope you learned something today, because I sure did. That was a crazy Wikipedia crawl if I ever seen one. If you'd like to support my channel, I do have a Patreon link below in the description. You can see my lovely patrons at the beginning and end of this video. Otherwise, do check out the other videos I've made if this is the first one you've seen. I, you need to learn about space. This is going to become increasingly relevant in everyone's life. This has been Hayu. Until next time. Bye.